Last but not least, before the final overarching demo video, we're getting to one of my favorite topics, which is machine learning with geospatial data. I know you probably know how machine learning works, but just to get us all on the same side, I prepared one slide just as a general introduction. So what is machine learning? Machine learning, you got several multi-model data sources, which you may get together into one harmonized data set or one harmonized data model. Out of that harmonized data model, you're creating training data with some enhanced features. So at the end of the day, you have a flat table and you're generating more and more features to describe the records that you have in that table. Based on that training data, you train a machine learning model and based on that, you get some predicted outcome. The best news is this all is not a one-time process, but it's rather an automated life cycle. So you need to retrain model, you need to gather your sources again, you need to get new data, and you need to react on changing data. This means that for the whole process that you see here, you need some kind of automized uh, ETL process, and you actually need automized data transformation as well as model training. And if you're dealing with multi-model data, if it's graph data, spatial data, semi-structured documents, um, that process can get complex and it may incorporate special spatial data handling. So how or what is the generic approach to spatial machine learning? I'm not sure if there's one, but if you ask me and I have to say something, I would point out that approach. So let's say you have that thing up there, which is your machine learning model, and you want to make that spatially aware. How do you do that? Um, your first issue will be that your machine learning model actually does, doesn't understand latitudes and longitudes. It doesn't have a sense for spatial reference systems and it doesn't know anything about proximity. So how do you make your model aware of the geospatial relation? My answer is um, you have to abstra abstract from that geospatial specifics by calculating spatial features and using spatial binning and clustering. That means the features that you actually calculate in itself this is not geospatial data, so it's just number data, it's categorical data. Um, but to get to that features, you actually use a spatial engine, or you use spatial calculations. And in the next video, I'll show you one example, which actually pretty nicely demonstrates that this is really an, an enhancement to your machine learning model and that it can, that the geospatial dimension can increase robustness as well as precision of your model. How does that look in real life? So what you see up here is uh, taxi trajectories for the city of Porto. So it's actually uh, the trajectories of taxis traveling through the city, um, which is a list of latitude and longitude pairs. So on a database level, this is line strings, right? This is hard to handle by a machine learning model, and it consists of geospatial specifics, like for example, the spatial reference system. In this case, I used hexagonal clustering to abstract from those specifics and um, actually count the number of taxi pickups for each hexagonal cluster in the city of Porto, which you see depicted down here. So when I apply that hexagonal binning, I can actually aggregate all the measures per bin. So I can count the number of taxi uh, pickups. Also, I can reference each location in the city by a simple ID which in itself is not geospatial data anymore. So the ID would be, for example, uh, hexagon cell 4711. So this is a reference to one location in the city of Porto, but in itself, for the machine learning model, this appears, appears to be categorical data in ge instead of geospatial data. So the data set that's Behind that picture is actually a data set that you can get uh, on Kaggle. So it consists of the taxi trajectory data of the years 2013, 2014, I think. Um, and I built a little demo based on that using SAP HANA Spatial, Jupyter Notebooks, and Kepler GL for visualization. So I'm not going to go into the details of the demo. You can look that up in my blogs that you see down here. Um, I'm just showing you four results out of it. Number one is an analysis of the taxi pickups over time. So I applied the geospatial clustering. In addition, addition to that, I applied the binning um, on the time level. So I have the number of taxi pickups per location and per hour in the city of Porto. Um, the data preparation has been done 100% on the database level in SAP HANA, and I used Kepler GL for the visualization to create that video that you see over here. So 
what you can see is what you would expect. You see a rush hour pattern. You see that in the morning, in the evening, you got more pickups than uh, in the times between. Um, you see at the very bottom of the screen the time axis. So we're getting slowly towards Christmas 2013. Now around Christmas, the whole situation gets a bit more calm. You got less taxi pickups. Now that we're going towards New Year, everything goes up again and you got more taxis driving through the city. Now that we're in the new year, everything gets back to normal um, with a rush hour pattern. Second analysis that I've done is uh, to actually set the pickups in relation to the drop-offs of the taxis. Again, I applied the hexagonal binning, but um, this time I only visualized the connections between the center points of the hexagons. You see that the vast majority of taxi drives is actually going from the airport to the city and vice versa. If you zoom into the city, you also see that a big, a big portion of the, of the taxi drives uh, are just short trips in the city of Porto. So the point where the most pickups actually are is the inner city um, train station. So this was not machine learning yet. It's just some kind of spatial analytics. When we're going into the direction of machine learning, what we can do is that we actually try to predict travel times. So how long does it take me, for example, to get from that train station, which is Sao Bento station, to the airport? Um, I trained the machine learning model using the hexagonal cells as a categorical, categorical feature. So uh, what you see up here is uh, that I predict a trip of going on the 10th of February 2020 at 5 o'clock in the morning, and it's going from the train station to the airport, and I'm predicting the exact same trip, but just 5 o'clock in the evening. Um, you see that in the morning, this trip is predicted to take 966 seconds, um, according to my machine learning model on HANA. Um, at the rush hour, it's predicted to take uh, roughly 1,300 seconds. This actually matches pretty well what you see down here, um, what the predicted duration in real life is. The fourth example that I brought with me is that I try to predict where the destination of a taxi would be. So giving a starting point, giving, given the time of a day, and given a starting direction of the taxi. So I actually looked at the first five GPS coordinates to just determine the direction. Where is this trip likely going to end? Because this is something which really could help taxi operators to estimate what the amount of vehicles would be in a certain area at a certain point in time. So when you look at that example here on the left side, you see the green cell where the taxi is starting and you see the direction the taxi is heading to. Based on that input, my model is predicting uh, that the ride is ending in that cell here in the center of the city. Uh, in general, you can say that the center of the city is a very likely destination independent of the starting cell. But you see also that there is some, some probability that the taxi ride is going to the seaside. On the right hand side, you see the same trip just at the different time of the day, heading to a different direction. And you see as the outcome uh, depicted here, that the probability that the trip is going to the seaside is not as high anymore, that you see uh, with the greenish cells here. Um, but the probability that the trip is going to the northeast in this case is higher than before. And the actual predicted target of the model is the cell up here with the green star. As promised before, in the next video, I'm going to show one Jupyter Notebook, which exactly shows one case of spatial machine learning with and without the geospatial dimension, so that we can exactly compare what the benefit of incorporating spatial data into the machine learning model is. Thank you for listening so far.